ACDA's mentoring program began with a strategic plan that we worked on about three years ago in which I ask our full membership and all our leadership, um, what are the most important priorities for our association? What should we, should we be addressing? What sort of benefits do we really need to uh, look at for the 21st century? And overwhelmingly, the response we got was that, that mentoring is, is one of those issues that is in everyone's mind and um, believe it's going to be so important in their leadership uh, work uh, to be able to work as a mentor and uh, help protégés um, as they move into their career. So we uh, began working on what we could do to uh, answer that need, uh, which led us to some developing a software program uh, through a Stanford University software developer who has now tailored a program for just for us in which we will release in December. Uh, it'll be a, a national, a, a full-scale mentoring program where a mentor will be able to put a profile of their work uh, on our site. Uh, someone that's looking for help, a protege, if you will, uh, will be able to put their profile on our site and uh, the two areas uh, based on keywords and based on uh, needs and expertise and uh, uh, other descriptors, uh, perhaps geography, um, where the people are, what kind of vocation they're working toward, uh, schooling, uh, all kinds of different descriptors are going to uh, allow us basically to match uh, a protege with someone that wants to be a helper or a mentor in that area. And ACDA through our own um, leadership structure uh, with state leaders and uh, division leaders and national staff leaders, we're going to be able to be the, the uh, third party in making sure that the mentor and protege uh, are able to find each other and that the relationship can develop online so that uh, the help that they're seeking and the kind of advice and kind of uh, uh, guidance that uh, is looking for and they're seeking will actually be able to happen by uh, matching those uh, individuals together. So we've been developing this program. We, we beta tested it in our Eastern Division all last year. We worked out the kinks. Uh, the division itself was able to do some of this mentoring with protégés and mentors. They kept notebooks uh, and uh, dialogue boards going online so that uh, good questions could be uh, uh, dis uh, listed that helped them or ways to get the uh, relationship started, ways to keep journal uh, progress of the report, uh, progress of the relationship, all those kind of kinks and, and tools that would help the mentor and help the protege were worked out during our beta testing program. Uh, also, the state of Minnesota, who has a very fine, strong uh, ACDA chapter, they beta tested it last year. And we feel like now we've got uh, enough help, enough resources to help both mentor and help protege uh, work out um, uh, their relationship and connection with a uh, accountability piece being uh, ACDA members and ACDA leaders that keep the, the uh, work continuing and make sure that uh, um, dialogue continues and that both mentor and protege are, uh, are participating. And then when it comes time for the, the uh, uh, conversation to end or the relationship to end uh, so that it will be ended in a, in a nice way that uh, complements both the protege and the mentor. So we're very excited. We know of no other national program like this and it certainly is the answer to what we uh, we're looking for uh, as a way to address the growing desire uh, for mentorship throughout our, our uh, uh, whole membership. The uh, mentorship program with ACDA is going to be a global uh, po possibility. The, the, the only criteria is that a person needs to be, would have to be a member of ACDA to use it. And the reason we want membership is because membership also brings accountability. We know that if someone has joined ACDA, we, we have their information. Uh, we know they're a professional that wants to uh, uh, go by the uh, uh, statements of uh, ethics, the statements of um, uh, uh, professional operation that we have. So we know that person has already stepped up to wanting to be in our association. And they also have a track record uh, with us. We keep a database that of course records when a member attends a conference or when a member uh, 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 renews their membership, where they are, what their institution is, what kind of choir they direct. So uh, being a member helps us to further qualify both the protege and the mentor because we want really strong accountability here and we want to make sure that this happens and operates at the highest level. So membership will be the qualifier, but ACDA membership, membership is not limited to the United States. It actually is worldwide. So to, to answer your question, there will be 
probably mentors and protégés from around the world that are part of this. Vocal jazz has become one of the fastest growing and most exciting areas of all of ACDA's uh, areas of influence and work. Um, I've been thrilled to work closely with the Jazz Educators Network in the last two years and their leadership to uh, really bring new interest sessions to our conferences, uh, new leadership uh, into our repertoire and standards area for jazz music, jazz performance, jazz education. So we're thrilled about it. We see the auditions uh, increasing for the performances at our regional and national conferences in the area of jazz and we know that of course jazz being a unique American art form it's one of the beautiful things that we can export to the world to say when, when we're looking at world music and we're looking at uh, the contributions that various countries make for the United States to be able to step up with vocal jazz is just so right for us as a country as we participate on the whole world stage. I love it personally because I, I've seen what it's done to make better musicians of our young singers. Uh, there's no question about uh, experience in jazz techniques and jazz singing. Uh, makes them grow as a musician and uh, makes their ears stronger, uh, makes their uh, improvisational skills better, uh, makes their listening better. So it's just brought in a tremendous energy to ACDA. We see it growing uh, and we're thrilled that uh, we're able to partner with the Jazz Educators Network in a meaningful way so that uh, we can be more helpful to them and they can certainly be uh, more helpful to us. The gamut of uh, music experiences that we have in the, uh, the choral world um, seem to be growing in every area. Uh, each year, um, it, I am impressed by the number of uh, early music ensembles, 19th century uh, uh, music uh, groups, uh, symphonic choruses, uh, community-based choruses, children's uh, choruses, uh, uh, academic choruses. I, I'm continually impressed by how many choruses seem to be growing uh, in every area. Uh, I, I could not make a case that any one period seems to be uh, uh, leading uh, another when it comes to um, uh, historical styles or types of music. You know, we've gone through a period uh, earlier of historic performance practice, and uh, we, we were greatly informed by early music specialists and Baroque music specialists, Renaissance, medieval music specialists. But what we saw that happened after that was as people learned and, and, and got more proficient, um, of course, they wanted to try out different levels of competency, so we see more ensembles developing in those areas as we uh, know more and more and have greater specificity in our ability to accomplish it. So I see a growth in every area. I see a growth in every choral area. Uh, we, when we have our national conferences, we always get a little bit of reaction that we tend at the conference to be dwelling on contemporary music, new composers, living composers, uh, more recent composers, world composers, but that's not really reflective. Our conferences are not necessarily reflective of what the mainstream of performance looks like uh, across the country. And as I see programs developing in schools and uh, churches and communities, I see really a, an attention to the entire spectrum. I don't think anything is getting cheated, and I think the festivals that are growing up around the world to celebrate all these different styles are, are as robust as they ever have been. And that's not just from a sort of sales perspective from me uh, wanting to see uh, uh, and advocate for choral music. I truly hear that kind of vibrancy going on with packed houses for music uh, across the centuries. I mean, you have groups such as Anonymous Four, you have the Hilliard Ensembles, you have uh, the Estonian Philharmonic. All of these are performing early music at the highest level. Um, we know that recording labels are giving us more and more variety from all eras, and so I just see a robust treatment to, um, to all of those different periods of music. In terms of how ACDA uh, influences public education and in public uh, attitudes uh, when it comes to choral music, we have really been able to take uh, a step up in that area by having 
50 years of history and of uh, recorded video from our performances going back to as early as uh, the early 60s of incredible choirs performing uh, all through those years at our conferences. Because of that tr tremendous archive that we have and that bank of material, we've been able to uh, make those available through various media today so that uh, people can hear uh, this music through the ages and, and uh, music of all kinds of uh, uh, performances and all kinds of choirs. So I think one of our biggest areas of influence has simply been our ability to put our archives into um, digital form and put it out there uh, for people to be able to use. Now we don't require anyone to be a member of ACDA to pull from those kind of archives, so we're not we're not limiting it just to membership. We we have it available on uh, things such as our own YouTube channel. We have it available on our own website for free. We put it on CoralNet on a regular basis. So I, I think our biggest influence has been simply to share what we've gathered uh, over the years now and share it freely um, and push it uh, out to those that uh, would want to see it. Well, the topic of music and choral music as a profession is an exciting topic for me. Uh, I always, when I was an academic, I always loved having this conversation with parents who were asking what their son or daughter would do with uh, uh, the degree or do with a, a conducting degree in choral music. And there I was making my living, uh, thank you very much, doing that kind of choral work. So um, I, I feel like many of us are living examples of a full-time uh, profession that's very energetic and very uh, 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 fulfilling by just uh, working in choral music. I also have to say to people when they when we have that conversation, I have to uh, admit my daughter, who's a junior in college, she's going after that same career, and and I couldn't be more enthusiastic about what she's doing. I, I know that the promise for a position for her is very strong. I know that uh, uh, there's going to be room for uh, choral music leaders uh, forever. It's not a form that is in any jeopardy. Uh, it's it's been around since the beginning of time and it's a it's a choral form that's unique because it's the only instrument that can deliver a text to people in harmony no other no other instrument can do that and it can do it in so many cool ways I mean through jazz it can do it through pop forms it can do it through all these historic forms that we've talked about so um, I, I feel very confident that our people are going to be placed but what's most exciting to me is that the entrepreneurial spirit the innovative spirit that sort of is uh, overwhelming the 21st century is leading to um, great new ideas in how people are living it out. You, you can just simply look to YouTube or you look to personal performances and small ensembles that are being formed and, and entrepreneurial uh, groups that are doing all kinds of uh, fun work when it comes to uh, group singing. Um, I see all kinds of expressions of this uh, around the United States and around the globe. So I think uh, the entrepreneurial and the innovative are going to join the traditional forms and continue to have a, a really a warm and, and good placement for those that are called to uh, this area. The effect that the internet and uh, uh, digital media has had on choral music has just been exponential for our growth. The excitement that it brings, the creativity that it allows uh, people to take an idea and to play with it, to multi-track it, to play with their own voice, their own composition, or other composers and, and uh, uh, other creators and other singers from other places, uh, has just been phenomenal. We, we, we watched within two years a group, the Pentatonics, go from just a a kind of experimentation, a, a YouTube phenomena to a group that's now touring the country. You know, we, we think of uh, Journey's lead singer being replaced uh, by someone who basically was discovered for YouTube. I mean, this has become the new paradigm for a lot of us for creativity. Um, when I think about the music that I do uh, with my choir or the music that I write, uh, the very first thing I think about is how am I going to actually show it on YouTube? What am I going to do to produce my own little video so that somebody will be able to hear this and if they want to use it uh, they can and of course the search engines are so amenable to that that it doesn't take uh, any time for us to find our audience so it's, it's really been a, a, a phenomenal a moment for us and for ACDA it's changed the way we we share information it's changed the way we audition uh, groups uh, it's changed the way we listen to things uh, for our conferences uh, it's just been the uh, probably the greatest innovation in, our, in my lifetime when it comes to 
to listening and when it comes to uh, uh, being able to share material. I just love the way we're able to internationalize uh, our knowledge now based on uh, th this phenomena. So uh, it's been uh, fascinating. I feel like we're in the Wild West in terms of where it's going to go. Uh, it's kind of fun to watch uh, each week something new has caught our attention, but uh, I think that's great and it's going to settle and um, you know we're going to find new ways to use it and new ways to and in a way exploit it um, and I think for the good uh, is um, people will always want to use their voice and, and, and express themselves through the voice. Yes, uh, national broadcasts uh, have certainly moved uh, in, in an interesting direction and we, we realize that uh, uh, popular culture really carries the day when it comes to popular programming and uh, I agree the national public radio, you know, it used to be a, a documentary on, uh, it would be a documentary on Bernstein and now it's going to be a documentary on, on uh, Motown uh, and that's fine. I think it's uh, everything, history holds everything and everything, all of that has an interesting uh, progression to it. Uh, um, I, I think the way we're going to really influence things uh, is that uh, live music and uh, live performance um, is still one of the most thrilling things that we can experience as humans. We're not going to, I don't think, do away with community. If anything, we're going to uh, yearn for more community and there's nothing more exciting to me than a jazz group who goes out there on the limb and tries something and lands on their feet or a, a Bobby McFerrin who creates an experience that will never be recreated based on that one moment that he was uh, with a group of people. Uh, I feel that way with live music. When I perform live music that's a once in a lifetime event. Now recording's great, television's great, all of those things they can all be edited though. Um, even as fun as Jimmy Fallon's uh, uh, remakes and, and covers are, um, I don't know how many times they practice that before they get the final one. I bet it's a hundred times. It's not going to be the first time. Live music doesn't have that opportunity. So I think we're always going to have experts that can do it well the first time to knock people off their uh, socks. You know, I loved when Renee Fleming sang the national anthem this past year. That showed people this is not an enhanced voice. This is a human being making those sounds without any uh, fireworks or without any particular tuning mechanisms other than her own ears and her own voice. And I think there's always going to be a thrill when a human actually is able to do that. And people will want to do it. They want to be good. Uh, they, they don't want to be replaced by a uh, machine. They want to be able to express themselves. So I, I think um, while we see popular culture carrying a lot of this, uh, our desire for uh, absolute expert and absolute uh, perfect uh, renditions is what drives a lot of that live media. You know, reality shows are kind of interesting. They want to show the flaws, but even reality shows are rehearsed flaws. So I think, uh, I think there's still going to be a place for the real and for the unedited and for the live performance. And I think that's really what ACDA is about. We're about people who are still devoted to live singing, uh, 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 personal acoustic singing, um, uh, live performance, and doing the very best live performance that would get as close to perfection as you can uh, without any editing possibilities. I think the skill set that's necessary for the 21st century is, is unique. Uh, it does carry forward with it um, issues of the past. I mean, we still have to be excellent musicians. We still, as conductors, have to be good gestural conductors. We have to have good ears. The basics of being able to hear a problem and fixing a problem, uh, th those uh, techniques, those abilities are not going to go away. But I think the 21st century challenges that come to us really come in the form of leadership challenges. Um, today's environment to make a performance relevant to a local community, to be able to um, do a performance with uh, the forces that we have, with the budget and the amount of money we're able to raise. These are new pressures that are, are coming to us in, in new ways in the 21st century. So I think the training of the 21st century musician and choral musician and conductor is going to have to take some particular things uh, uh, to heart. One of those things is 
I think the 21st century uh, conductor, 21st century organization has got to be innovative. They have to think of new ways to do things with the, the reality of today's audience. Uh, that audience has a shorter attention span. That audience has more demands on its time. That audience gets more entertainment delivered in its home that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, all of those pressures come to the modern conductor who wants people to leave their home and their comfort of their home to come into a performance. Uh, it, even, it even has pressures on people who are even doing recording. They, they still have to take in mind what the 21st century ears want to hear and what the 21st century uh, ears are able to pull uh, into their experience. So I think innovation is a, is a crying need. And innovation uh, has to speak to the areas of local community. Uh, innovation has to speak to the areas of contemporary music. I think innovation has to speak to the areas of getting more done with less money and less resources. So uh, innovation is my answer uh, to the leadership, one of the leadership challenges that we have. Another uh, uh, challenge that I really put out to our leaders is that in the 21st century, we as conductors have got to be more collaborative. Uh, we have to work at collaborating with other organizations with business, with uh, other departments, uh, with film studies, with theater. We have to be a collaborative mindset. Um, we, we, we don't have to change our expectations. We don't have to change anything related to our desire for the best performance, but we do have to have a mindset of being collaborators and not being isolated in our art form. Uh, so collaboration means that you're going to work with diverse types of people. You're going to work with uh, different type of motivations. You're going to move into areas that are going to cause tension to the way you work. Uh, somebody else works differently, so you're going to move into tension. And you're also going to stumble upon areas that, that uh, emerge really from any kind of collaboration that you probably haven't thought of before. And that's really the great outcome for me for collaboration is that we find a new answer and we get to innovation by um, collaborating with others. So I think innovation, collaboration are, are two strong areas. And then the third area that I talk about and that we started this interview with is the area of mentoring. I think the conductor has to see themselves as the teacher mentor. We've always called them a maestro, and that's, that's a great word for teacher. It's the Italian word for the one that teaches the score. But I think the conductor now is sort of seen as an artist in residence or a community artist in residence. And I think that role goes further than just the ensemble. It really becomes the uh, caretaker, perhaps, of a, of a musical heritage or a legacy, uh, whether it's choral or instrumental, that that person Person, uh, has to take into their community and I think mentoring comes into play with mentoring uh, people to understand that people to appreciate it mentoring others into um, the importance of it and the vision that you have uh, as a leader so I think those are the 21st century skills that uh, have become more important to me as I talk to future leaders in, in choral music Well, Alton, it's been great to be with you. I think, thank you for the opportunity of being at behind the mic and uh, ex being able to talk a little bit about the exciting work of the American Choral Directors Association. We're a membership uh, association. Uh, we are able to accomplish our mission, which is simply to inspire excellence in choral music performance and education, uh, composition and advocacy. We're able to do that to members. The more members we have in our organization, the, the more we're going to accomplish our mission. So uh, I, I am happy to say we're growing, but we want more people to join us in our work uh, as we work toward this inspiration. We don't certify people we don't we don't credentialize them we we as an association try to inspire to excellence which is uh, a, a work of the heart and it's a work of the spirit and so uh, we mean more people to join us in that enthusiasm and I thank you for what you're doing to help uh, help us in that mission as well and as you join uh, with us in the sort of the vocal um, exploration and those that have been really influential and in, uh, bringing it to the high level that it is today